we are honored, really honored to be here tonight. Um, I don't know, I, I'll only speak for me, honey, but I was shocked to hear that they wanted to give us an award because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, again, we decided to do this because of what you had said to me first was, you know, there's a real need for people to speak up, somebody who would be recognizable, and that would be you. And of course, being an adult child of an alcoholic, I said, no one wants to hear me or my story. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And it took me a while, didn't it, for me mm -hmm. to decide that, uh, that maybe you were right about that. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say to me? Tell them what you said to me. Which time? <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> when you wanted me to share. Oh, well, basically, I've been a social worker forever, and first of all, thank you to all the social workers in the room. Because yeah. one of the things that came out of it was people thanking me for putting social workers in a somewhat positive light, because we get usually get a lot of crap. At least I do child protective type work, so you know, instead of wanting to help a family, I always want to take kids away. So, so um, part of it was just really good to hear that when I said I was a social worker, that people really said thank you so much for making that comment too. So that was a nice part of it. Um, so basically, I I went through. If you guys had seen the series. Um, went through the stigma of living with my mom, committed suicide when I was a child, and never knew how to tell people that, never knew how to weave that into my life. And um, so I did in my 20s after I got married spontaneously, and I was in the Peace Corps and brought somebody home, and just, it was always making very impulsive decisions, and finally went to counseling, and they said, um, I was about 25, and the counselor said, so have you ever, talked about your childhood, have you worked on anything? And I'm like, well, no, let's talk about now. You know, why did I make this choice? I don't know. And she's like, no, no, we're going to go way back. So it was the first time I got a chance to really look at, you know, I knew I always had this secret. I didn't quite know how to say it. I mean, my good friends knew, but that was it. I was always very embarrassed. And um, so it was the first chance I had to really look at the power of that secret, me carrying it around. Um, even though I was very successful on the outside, um, it, it was a secret that I, I knew I was carrying around. So it, when I worked through that in my 20s, I realized the power of that and the power it gave me to really live fuller and healthier and happier um, and freer to say, yeah, my mom had a mental illness, very severe one. She tried to kill us as kids and um, which the counselor said, you can go back and find out more about that if you want. I'm like, no thanks, I'm, I'm all set with that. But just to understand that, you know, what I lived with, why I was impulsive and didn't think things through, through sometimes and things like that. So when I, Kevin and I have known each other for like 20, 20 something years. We were I thought it was more like 100, but go ahead. <laughs> we were neighbors married to other people, but I, at the time, really. And then about 10, year, about 10 years have passed, and we ran into each other about five years ago and um, at a football game. And um, so I, I, we just started dating and stuff, and I, I would see how much he was loved and really respected, and people were always coming up to him saying stuff. And, and so when I got to know his story, I was like, gosh, have you ever thought about telling people your story, like through TV? And... He was like, well, no one would ever want that. And I said, no, people, I know from my social work years, as well as personally, that people often will start an assessment if I ask them questions. And a lot of you will know this. They'll say, oh, you don't want to know that. I'm too embarrassed. Or that happened to me. And, you know, I'm really, I don't really want to talk about it. It's too, you know, it's too shaming. So it's, of course, the very thing they need to talk about. But it's really hard. So that's why I kept on bugging him, saying, would you think about telling your story and um so and so I did you yeah. know it took it took, it took a about while. a year it I'd took say. about a year and and the wonderful thing was it was just it, it was kind of like a a storm of things came together. I was negotiating a contract, and uh, all the bosses were trying to, you know, like, what, what would you like to do to kind of, like, energize yourself a little bit more? And I thought, I don't have enough energy now on the morning show. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they said, well, you know, something to perk your interest besides the weather. And, you know, it just came into my head that, well, my wife keeps saying I should tell this story about me being an adult child of an alcoholic and, around, you know, and, and the shame around it. 
and I thought they were going to fall off their chairs because they were so excited. They'd been trying to figure out a way to talk about it for years, but they, they, there was no face, and they thought that would be important. And they, you know, they were like, you want to be the face? And I was like, yeah, I'll be the face. And then I thought, oh, brother. But, uh, you know, I, I, I really did embrace it. And it was therapeutic for me, again, to, to do it publicly. And the reward has been the responses that we've received. And, you know, all you guys, the agencies were the first to respond during that week. But the viewers started responding immediately as well. We had hundreds of emails the first few days. We've had thousands and there st we still get mm -hmm. I still get one or two a week from people who are maybe just starting now to do something about it. They've kind of thought about it, thought about it, watched it on the website and have decided to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And that has been you know, again for me it's, it's like wow People really. And for me, listen. it was like I told you so, because <laughs> yeah. I knew I knew it was I knew the need was out there for someone to say that was so well loved. You know, someone to say publicly, it's okay, whatever you're going through and have been through, it's okay. So we we brought some. Um, I have no idea how much time we have, so just tell us <laughs> to shut up when we need to. We brought some of our favorite. If, if somebody you know, has a flute or something, they could play a little music, <laughs> and we'll know it's time to stop. But we just thought we'd read some of the, you know, obviously you can't read them all. We just picked some of our favorites, but this one was said the first day. Kevin, I put on the TV this morning looking to view and listen to the local news like I do each morning. What I found was a clip of you and your wife sharing your story. I became glued to the floor and just watched and listened. This is amazing, and I, for one, want to tell you how much I appreciate your willingness to share your personal story. We all have a story, and many of us keep it locked in our soul and let it control our lives. And then she went on about it. she was going to send it to her sons out of state and stuff. And that was something we heard a lot, too, was that, and even people uh, inside the television station, you know, some of my colleagues were like, you know, I hope my dad hears this. I hope my brother hears this. I'm sending it to my daughter in North Carolina. I'm sending it to my sister in Omaha, Nebraska. You know, um, it, it, it touched just about everybody mm -hmm. in the television station. Yeah, in fact, when we were taping, right before it ever aired, somebody right. came up and talked to Kevin after and said, "Oh my gosh, you're you t you're telling my story." And it was we knew we had something then, and it wasn't even like yeah. put together yet. Yeah, it was it was just a conversation about what we were going to do, and this guy was like, "Oh my God, that's me!" And I was stunned. Remember, I came home and told you. I said, "I'm." St I said, Wait to hear this, yeah. you know, and it's like this is just like you know he just heard, overheard a conversation. What happens when we start really talking about stuff? Yeah, you know. Well, here's what happened. This one, you it, like again, like you multiply all of these times hundreds. Your story really touched my heart. Thank you so much for sharing. And Linda, your belief that someone will want to listen really touched me. Um, and um, a lot of people just thanking us to thinking over and over and over for just being willing to share our story. And this one said, the timing is really symbolic for me. I just got home from my first counseling session. Um, well, I had a phone, we had phone calls too, and I had one one morning after an update, and he said, Kevin, and I said, yes. And he said, I heard your story. And I said, okay, good. And he goes, well, he says, I just want to tell you, you saved my life. And there was this long pause, and I, you know, I didn't know what to say, so I just kind of paused with him. And he said, you saved my life. And I said, how did I save your life? He said, I was going to kill myself. And I decided after I saw you and your wife that I'd pick up that phone and dial 211 instead. And he's not, he said, I'm now seeing a counselor. And he goes, I think I'm going to be okay. Mm. You know, did you get three of those? And I got three of them. Yeah. Three of them in about a week af you know after that first week and that's when it really you know it really sunk in that we have struck a chord and gosh maybe we saved 
some lives because we're always told in our business, you know, if you hear from three, there's probably a hundred out there just like them. So thank God that we were able to 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 make that connection to so many people. Mm -hmm. And we want that to continue as we go forward. We, we're starting to talk about another series for um, sometime later this year, uh, September or November. She wants September. Uh, so she'll, it'll probably be September. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we want to continue this, uh, this process because we think it's important. Yeah. And, and all of these, you know, that have come to us make that point. And, you know, especially, especially we want to hear from people. Like, if any of you guys have ideas for, for next, like, the next series that we do, um, you know, the focus was a lot on mental health and um, addiction issues and everything, but there's so many other things that people are ashamed over and um, like to really try to make sure that everybody feels included. So if you guys do have ideas, like, um, Kevin's email is, you know, through the website. <laughs> I always <laughs> forgot what the website is. WCSH6. It's at WCSH6. It's Kevin.Mannix at Gannett.com. And, you know, I get everyone, and I'd really love to hear from you guys because we want to continue the series. Uh, we're, we've also got an outline for a book that we're contemplating uh, writing. And we think that will be, hopefully, of some help and reach mm -hmm. some people that maybe we didn't reach on TV. Because not everybody watches TV. And that really ticks me off. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we could go on forever reading these, but the point is we just, we, you know, the, it was so nice that it was so well received. And this award is so sweet, too. Thank you so much. Um, but it was, it was just so nice to hear people say thank you over and over and over so it made a difference and that just made it all worthwhile. Yeah, it sure did. So thank you very much and, and as Linda said, thank all of you. I always, you know, everybody, people we were talking at the table and they said, what time do you get up? And it's like, oh, 2.30. I'm like, oh my God, you know, you were. Come on, I'm on television for crying out loud. I sit there and I do the weather. And it's fun. You know, I get to pick on Sharon. You know, Lee annoys the hell out of me. But, you know, that's it. That's, you know, that's the, as bad as it gets. I don't, I don't have to stand out there like Kelsey and Jackie in a snowstorm. You know, so you guys, you know, I know I work, but you guys do the real work and I and I'm very proud of this young woman right here because <laughs> she's fantastic at her job and you know I know she's been saving lives and I am so first of all I'm glad I ran into her again and second of all I'm glad she talked me into this mm -hmm. because I think this is our future there's bigger things ahead besides the morning report <laughs> plus he makes a lot more money than us so <laughs> feel sorry for him. <laughs> yeah, don't ever feel sorry for me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you Thank very, you very much. much. The award is very meaningful to us. Thank you.